the ballot? Hey, Mike. Uh, just uh, thanks for everything. And good luck with everything. Thank you. What's up? But I just wanted to call. Like I called mostly all, uh, about A Rod and Hymas over the time, and it was because A Rod always thought that both of my both good bad sentences, if you would, that didn't fit the crime. They, like A Rod got should have only got fifty games, and you you always spoke out against Bud Selig, and I thought that was great. Even when he was on your show, you you told him because he's not getting anything, but you, yet you use A Rod for. I remember calling you after the 60 Minutes show where the late, there was people worried about their lives, you said, but they're talk, talking to Major League Baseball instead of going to the authorities about the thing. Well, and you know, I, I, he, did, he didn't get, uh, he wasn't treated. They made him the guy they wanted to take down to try and make a point, which, listen, A Rod did what he did and deserved the, what he got, but. There were a lot of people who also did it, and everyone acted like he was the only guy who did it, and because he was the guy they wanted to make an example out of. That's what they chose to do. And baseball didn't handle that well, and you can, you can tell that when they, they never said they would never do again what they did in his case, and the people they did it with, they've never dealt, they got rid of a lot of them. So they didn't last very long. Alan and Rumston, what's up, Alan? Hey, Mike, I just wanted to thank you, as everybody else has, for well, 30 thank years. You. It's just great radio. And thank you. All the years, a couple of things, since you're a history guy, I'm putting you up there. You won't probably do this with uh, Carson retiring, Cronkite, <laughs> yeah. and in sports radio. No, seriously, in sports radio, you're going to be up there. It's going to be a sad day when, uh, when the 15th rolls around a few days. And for me personally, your insight um, to my Eagles, and to the Phillies in baseball season, and just watching sports in general, Mike, and then thinking, well, at one time, what are Mike and Dog going to say at 1 o'clock? What's Mike going to start off with? You know, you well, just that's the idea. Of, uh, I mean, you just hit on what really I think is the key to the whole thing, is you got to have people want to want to hear you the next day. I mean, that they're going to make an appointment to come and listen. And that's been my great, you know, as I've told people who've interviewed me, that's been my great uh, gift is that people have wanted to come listen to what I had to say at 1 o'clock on Mondays or Tuesdays or Wednesdays. And you know what? Uh, that's what it's all about. I mean, that's that's what we're trying to do here. Nick in West Harrison. What's up, Nick? Mike, man, I just wanted to uh, thank you for everything and still going through the uh, five stages of uh, grief here, still stuck <laughs> in the denial stage. But <laughs> just wanted to thank you. You were awesome on uh, Good Morning Football this morning. I, oh, I tuned in specifically for that. They're nice. Um, they were nice kids. They really were. Yeah, you could tell, like the other caller said, Traeger just, you know, he's all smiles when he sees you. It's really cool to see. But, um, again, thank you for everything. I, I can uh, don't know what we're going to do after Friday, but, you know, hopefully we'll count down the days until uh, – we can hear from you again, but uh, what do you think of a, a McCutcheon and Harrison combo for the Mets? Do you think that makes sense, or is that too much uh, too much money for them? Uh, I, I'm worried about McCutcheon. I, I'm, a, I'm just yeah. a little worried about him. I wish he was. I just wish he was guaranteed. I just wish I could trust him. I don't like what I've seen the last two years. I, I worry if he comes here and he, he does a Met thing where he just folds it up. How bad would that be? I mean, he, you know, he, he really was bad last year. You know, he really had a bad year. Now, I know he had a good September, but I don't think he salvaged. Let me look to see how bad it looks like for the whole season. You know, you got him yet, Monza? Should I look him up? Do you have him? I mean, uh, Chris, you got him there? Uh, yeah, I got him. Uh, give me, what do you got? He hit 279. Right. 28 home runs, 88 RBIs. He salvaged it pretty good. Uh, what was it the year before? Two fifty six right. at twenty four seventy nine. Not good. I mean, those are not what he did the years before. I mean, so he he picked it. I had a good September last year. That's one thing he did. But I mean, he's he's really fallen off the last couple of years. So he scored I scored ninety four runs last year. No, he was pretty good. He's, listen, he was he he really had a good finish, and that really picked up his numbers. They weren't terrible, but they're not like they were. I mean, he was one of the best players in baseball for a while. Go back four years ago and give me his number, four years ago, five years ago. Yeah, he won the MVP in 2013. Right, give me that year. Uh, 317, um, 21 home runs, 84 RBIs, scored 97 runs. No, that's not. And what else the next year after that? On base percentage was 404. Yeah, that's good. And what about the next year after that? Uh, 314 batting average with a 410 on base percentage that led the league. Right. Uh, 25 home runs, 83 RBIs. All right. Next so year, 2396. He's never been a batting he's average never been a slugger RBI guy. So I mean, listen, I think I think he's he helps. I just hope that he's not going south. He did come back stronger last year. He did come back the 
you know, the better. He did come back the uh, second half of the season, especially in September. He came back strong. Um, I just would worry about if he was going downhill with the Mets have, you know, had a habit of bringing in the guys like Alomar and Carlos Baeger and guys like that who have just, just fallen off the cliff when they got them. That's and the his only defense thing. has really fallen off even more I, than his offense. I think that's true, too. I think that is a big, good point. Josh in Jackson, New Jersey. What's up, Josh? Hi, hi Mike. Yeah. Oh, I want to thank you for all the 30 years. I'm only 19. So, so what do you want to really, thank me for about a year? I mean, <laughs> no, I, I'll, I'm, I'll tell you, I'm in eighth grade when the whole Jerry Sandusky came out. I skipped classes, literally. I got punished. Now, you're in eighth grade. You shouldn't be thinking about such things. I, I couldn't not listen to you, Mike. I'm serious. All right. Really, so, I couldn't. I, I, I'll, I'll trust you, but, you know, that, that's a little young for you to be thinking about such things as that, you know? I just kind of not listen to you. I'm sorry. I, well, I appreciate I it very not. much. You're only 19. What, wait, what school are you in now? I'm in, I'm by Jackson. I just start, I'm finishing high school now. At 19? Uh-huh. I stayed in late. Okay. Yeah. So what's on your mind? Um, I want to know, what do you think Um, at the end of Porzingis' career? Do you think it's going to be like Patrick Ewing, better or worse? Well, listen, you... I, I, I mean, uh, it's a little early to get to the back of his career. He's got a ways to go. To uh, to Matt, he's got the ability to play on the level with Ewing. He's just got to prove he can be as durable and consistent as Ewing. He does have the ability to play that level, but he's got to do it for a long time. Ewing did it for a long time. You know, Ewing put up his twenty. You know, four and ten is twenty three and nine is twenty four and nine. You know, every year you got to put it up for a long period of time. Brian in Rockville Center, what's up, Brian? Hey, Mike, how are you? Good, what's up? All right, this is uh, most likely my last one, so I'll just say I'm uh, I'm really gonna miss you. You're an institution, and thanks for the memories. Thank you. Um, with uh, with my point, you know, you said uh, you were talking yesterday about uh, the Hall of Fame. And you said you had a good point how, you know, Alan Trammell is in because he was likable. Meanwhile, Albert Bell, who definitely belongs, he's not in. The press just hated him. And, you know, any Hall of Fame, baseball, football, rock and roll Hall of Fame, any Hall of Fame, there's people who belong who aren't and people who don't belong that are in. And I just wonder, one thing I'm really going to miss uh, asking you, you know, I give you names asking if they're Hall of Fame. There are three right. names. Number one, uh, Jerry Smith. Hall of Famer, Jerry Smith. Um, he owned every record he, when he retired by you far. Know, pr- close. A position that was a little different then, uh, <clears throat> but a very consistent player, no question. Very close. Okay. Borderline. Okay. But, okay. Okay. Fair. Um, I think he is, but fair. Uh, Jack Tatum. I'm going to say no. Okay. And the last, okay, the last guy, he's not a Hall of Famer. Okay, but where does Mark Bavaro uh, belong on the all-time tight ends? And one, one last question. I know it, uh, you could go days answering this, but if you had to pick one, who is, like, your favorite person to interview? Who is, like, your favorite interview of the past 30 years? Um, now, as far, Bavaro had the ability to be a Hall of Famer. The problem is he, he just his, – we talked about it with Dr. O'Brien, if you heard on the weekend, how bad his foot was. Mark Bavaro got to a point. Parcells had a rule where you had to play to practice. You had to practice to play. That didn't count for Bavaro, because first of all, Bavaro gave him every ounce that he had when he played. But he couldn't practice him and play him. He couldn't get enough out of him. He could. He could not get him on the field if he did that. So he did not try to do that with him. Uh, he knew he just couldn't do it. Bavaro had the heart of a lion. He just, you know, he was so banged up. But he, when you talk about a guy, his blocking ability, his ability after the catch, the stuff he did, uh, he was he has he was a Hall of Fame player. Just didn't have enough time to play long enough to be a Hall of Famer. He had a Hall of Fame ability, without any question. Back after this.